If you haven't hiked in high altitude before, you should definitely watch this video because we lost one of our friends to high altitude sickness while we were hiking in the Himalayas in Nepal. This is a great little introduction to see just how hard it's going to be. This is this is no joke. This is no, you know, easy easy excursion. So it's good that we get to do this and experience what it's actually going to be like once we get up and above. We were a group of four that had set out on the Annapurna circuit to go and tackle the Throng Law Pass, one of the highest altitude passes that any of us had ever tried to achieve. And by the end, only three out of four of us actually made it over the pass. And this was our group. Whoa, look at that giant grasshopper! Go <laughs> right there, girl. <laughs> Welcome to traveling with Eve. <laughs> I'll let you know when it's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a grasshopper. It's praying mantis, Eve. It's praying mantis. Now, before I get into explaining what actually happened and why one of our friends got altitude sickness, let me tell you a little bit about where we were and where we had been on this trip so far. We had spent the last five days hiking through the lower lands of the Annapurna Circuit. We had started in Besisahar and we had made it all the way up to where we were now, Manang. Manang is a very, very cool place. It is a frontier town with a big dirt road going through the middle for sheep, horses, donkeys, whatever might be carrying packs food, resources, up to these smaller, smaller towns and these smaller, smaller tea houses at the top of the trek. This is the last stop before it's only donkeys, it's only horses, or you're on foot for the rest of the trip. And it's also one of the last places that has a more established hospital, a place where if you do get altitude sickness, this is where you can get the resources for it. Now, while we did take advantage of those fantastic resources, we also took advantage of one of the best ways of motivating ourselves to do these hikes every day and that came in the form of a chocolate bar and that chocolate bar just happened to be Snickers if there had been anything that could have sponsored this trip it would have been Snickers we ate so many Snickers on this trip the famous Snickers girl <laughs> Once we had our fill of Snickers, once we'd restocked, resupplied, there was a few things that we had to do. So the end goal of our trip was to get over this Throng Law Pass. Now, in order to go over the pass, you have to acclimatize yourself. And this is where the altitude comes into play. So we're at about 3,600 meters here, and we're going up to about uh, 5,600 meters. So it's gonna be quite intense. In order to prepare for that elevation, we're gonna have to do a few uh, day treks. Let's see your blister. Let's see it. Ooh. Uh, you should probably pop it. Okay. Or it'll pop gnarly. on its own. Or just leave it until it pops. It will pop on its own eventually. I'd rather just like, I just don't have a needle. In order for us to feel comfortable going over the pass, in order for our bodies to be able to handle going over the pass, we had to do altitude adjustment hikes. And so what we'd done is we'd planned three hikes where we planned to spend one day gaining at least four to 5,000 feet in elevation and then coming back down in order to adjust our bodies to introduce that high altitude, that thin air to our systems so that when we did the Throng Law Pass, it wouldn't put our bodies into shock. And in Manang, there's two hikes that you can do to adjust your body to the altitude. Manang is an incredible village. It is what is close to an old Western village, I think, as you could find. There's a lot of dogs roaming the streets, horses, donkeys, everything. It's really, really fascinating. The rawness of it makes it so, uh, so intriguing to, to be a part of. So we're gonna go to the highest lake in the world at about 4,600 meters as a day trip from Manang. And we're gonna do a few other trips to prepare ourselves, because as you can tell, my body's not prepared. I just walked up this little hill. I'm already out of breath. Normally I'll be running up this thing. So we got a few days of uh, elevation preparation and then we're gonna make the pass. Hopefully, 
everything goes okay. And it also happens to have that hospital. So if things go wrong, if your body does not acclimatize, if you start to get altitude sickness, if you start to get haste or one of these other sicknesses that is prevalent when you're going in high altitude, then you can take a Jeep down or you can have access to that hospital and hopefully resolve it before you continue on in your trek. Now this is why that was very important because out of the four of us, one of us had been starting to develop altitude sickness symptoms. Now, Menang is at almost 11,500 feet, just over 3,500 meters. And altitude sickness symptoms can start to develop anywhere as low as 2,500 meters. So while we were in Menang, we had two hikes that we wanted to do. One, a shorter introduction, kind of a smaller hike, and the second one was a hike to Ice Lake. And the hike to Ice Lake was gonna be the really challenging hike. We had to go over 4,000 feet in one day to go there. And because one of our group members was starting to feel altitude sickness, we decided to do the easier hike the first day and let her rest. And that group member was Heather. As we had gotten into higher altitude, she had started to feel more and more sick. And this was a bad sign. But luckily we were in Menang, and so while we were in Menang, she had a chance to go to the hospital to see what was wrong and hopefully find a treatment so that she could go and do these high altitude hikes with us. But just to be safe, on that first altitude hike, she decided not to come and she decided to rest. So Leo, Eve, and I just went and did this hike by ourselves. I'm scared for the ice lake. Yeah. Why? It's because it's so high up. <laughs> How are we holding up? <laughs> We made it, kids. We. How are we feeling after the first elevation training day? Pretty good. Not bad, eh? Short of breath. Own Birkenstocks, baby. Oh yeah. This is about as 360 pano as you can get. Glacier Lake, more glaciers. And we came from way down there. And down there is Menang. Heather's down there somewhere, wrestling with her altitude sickness. Menang Mall. Tomorrow we're going way up there. Where are we going? Way up there. And then tomorrow we're going up somewhere over there. Hopefully, Tomorrow Eve's our guide. Under. All right, we should go to the end of that thing. We should try and get up to there. But the next big hike that we had to do was Ice Lake. And we had to make sure that Heather was doing okay. But the next morning came around and she was ready. She wanted to do the hike. She wanted to try to get to Ice Lake to get over 4,000 feet in one day of altitude gain. And so, as a group, we headed out to do the Ice Lake hike. Today is gonna be one of our toughest days so far. It is an ascension day, where we're going over 1,000 meters up to Ice Lake, and then descending 1,000 meters again to hopefully get us accustomed. Now we're going up to 4,600 meters which is a lot. I'm already out of breath and we're only at about 3,700 right now. It's gonna be an intense day. Hopefully we make it there and back. We had been together for almost eight days hiking. We were exhausted, we were, well, slightly sick of each other at this point, and one of us was quite sick, so the going was very, very rough. Climbing up to Ice Lake was challenging. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, I'm not going to lie, it was a tough hike. You made it to snow. Got some pretty bad blisters on my heels. So I'm doing Birkenstocks to start the day. Hopefully these Birkenstocks will give my feet a little time to heal and rest on this hike because I haven't given them a lot. We had to go slow. And the reason why we had to go slow is because you can't rush these hikes. 
If you gain too much altitude too quickly and exhaust yourself, the likelihood of you experiencing some sort of altitude sickness increases tenfold. So slowly and surely, we worked our way up to Ice Lake. Close to the top, there is one last tea house. Only a few hundred feet below where Ice Lake was, a local tea shop was there with food and last supplies before you made it to Ice Lake. And at this tea shop, I met some very inspiring Russian babushkas. And though we all felt low, we felt exhausted, we felt tired, seeing these babushkas on top of the mountain, only a few hundred feet from Ice Lake, gave us that little extra push and that little extra drive to go the last few hundred feet up to Ice Lake. <laughs> the babushka is getting a nice photo of the dog. <laughs> all the way down, look at that, extra hard camera work. <laughs> and the views from the top were absolutely stunning. So incredible, so worth going through everything that we did to get there just to see the views. So you definitely can't see the scale, but Menang is all the way down there, underneath these big mountains. Came all the way up to this lake. At the top of the mountain, we had to have a hard conversation. We had to see if our entire group would be able to go to the Throng Law Pass after experiencing these intense altitude changes. And as we walked around and explored in this high altitude environment, we had a chance to discuss and we had a chance to chat and figure out if we thought our entire group could make it through the rest of the pass. And although this had been a challenging day, and although we had all had a bit of a tough time getting to this first initial high altitude training day, only three out of four of us were healthy enough to go to the Throng Law Pass. And so unfortunately, we had to say goodbye to one of our friends. We had to make the safe decision and not push past what our bodies were telling us. We decided to leave Heather behind. For like two weeks, you're so dramatic. <laughs> 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 well, it sounds like we're bad friends. She also wanted to stay behind and be healthy and take a Jeep back down to lower altitude. And so down one member in our group, things became a little bit more serious. We came to a realization that even though so many people do this hike, high altitude is definitely no joke. It's definitely something that you really have to consider when doing these high altitude passes. And so as we had whittled down our group to only three members and our next few days adventure, was going to one of the highest lakes in the world. Well, it had been one of the highest lakes in the world. And we got some news about what had happened recently on this lake before we had to go for it. And we had to make some decisions with this news that we got about whether or not it was smart or safe to actually attempt this highest lake in the world, to attempt our third and final high altitude training before we would do the Throng La Pass. Because on this trek, not only a few days before we had planned to go to Talicho Lake, two people had died on this pass. And so we had a big decision to make about whether or not we would do it. 